Welcome to worship with Rockport United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Lauren Radzik, and I'm the pastor here at Rockport. And this is my family, Dave and Sophia. We invite you to check out our website at rockportumc.org for more ways to get involved with Rockport and for the latest information about our many ministries. Friends, we are grateful that you have joined us for worship today, and we hope that you'll experience God's presence and connect with us as we worship. Friends, we invite you to join in our call to worship, responding with the bold print. Listen, the Lord calls out to us, offering life. Teach, Teach us, lead us, us turn, turn us to your ways, O God. God. Walk in the paths of God's commandments with delight. Teach, Teach us, us, lead us, us turn us to your ways, O God. God. With our, our whole heart, heart we will turn to you and live. live. Friends, we invite you to join us in singing our opening hymn, Where Charity and Love Prevail. God who loves us. God finds pleasure. We turn now confessing our sins against God and neighbor. From evil, even, even when it masquerades as good, merciful God, deliver us. From selfishness and vain desires, merciful God, deliver us. From irresponsible behaviors, quarreling and jealousy, merciful God, deliver us. From hurtful disagreements, and irreconcilable differences. Merciful God, deliver us. Turn us away from the death sin inflicts. Lead us into the abundant life Christ brings. Forgive us, we pray, and teach us to forgive. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Laying aside the works of darkness, we live in the light of Christ. Gathered in Christ's name, surely he is among us, full of grace and truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and lifted to new life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and lifted to new life. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us join together in our prayer for illumination. From the beginning until now, loving God, we have turned away from you, following lesser ways, pursuing a lesser life than the life offered to us in Christ. Yet you will not abandon us. You call out, wooing and warning us to turn and return to you. Even when we fall away from our brothers and sisters in the church, you remain present with us. 
Open our hearts to the scriptures we read today. Help us to love as you love, wholeheartedly, until we are reconciled to you and our neighbor. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. A lesson from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves one, one another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love do does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. Bes besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Good morning. Do you guys know what this is? It's a bottle of medicine called calamine lotion. Calamine is a medication that is sometimes used to help stop itching. Have you guys ever had poison ivy or chicken pox? I haven't. I have not had either one of them. My sister told me that when you have chicken pox, it starts out like a cold and you feel kind of crummy, you have a runny nose, then you run a fever, and then all of a sudden, itchy red bumps start to break out all over you, and the itching drives you banana pants crazy. But you can't scratch it because it's gonna make it worse. And she told me just how uncomfortable feeling it, it really is. Um, how did you guys feel when, when you had chicken pox? Um, how about poison ivy? Um, you know, I was a scout and I did a lot of hikes growing up um, and luckily I never got it. Uh, my sister and my mom could get it from across the room, but that's something I didn't have to experience. Knocking on wood because who knows? Um, I could still get it, right? Um, I don't know how I would do with either one of those because I'm kind of a whiny big baby when it comes to being very uncomfortable. Um, so, you know what though, having the chicken pox or poison ivy isn't hopeless. Um, you know, if you put calamine lotion on, I don't know how many of you have experienced calamine lotion, but I remember getting spider bites or mosquito bites or stuff, and you know, and my mom would put it on, you rub it onto, and then you leave it. It dries on there, and it kind of, um, is supposed to have something in it that takes most of the itching away. It doesn't always take it all away, but it, it makes it manageable so that you can be comfortable again and it's not as bad. Um, and in a few days, the sores go away, the itching stops, life gets back to normal, right? During the time when Jesus lived upon the earth, an illness called leprosy was everywhere and it was a serious disease that everyone was terrified of catching. When someone had leprosy, they were covered with sores all over their bodies. The difference between leprosy and chicken pox, though, is that um, when someone had leprosy, it was hopeless because there was no cure. Um, to make matters worse, when you had leprosy, people considered them to be unclean, which in Jesus' time meant they were very germy. And so the people with leprosy were not allowed to touch anyone or even get near anyone, which meant that the people who were sick with leprosy had to leave their families. They had to leave their friends and they had to leave their homes and move away outside the city. They weren't even allowed in the city. They had to stay apart from them. And if they were very lucky, 
family or friends would bring food or items for them that they might need, but they had to leave them very far away from the place the person was living because they were afraid to get too close. And then they would hurry home. You know, you probably didn't really, it's really hard to talk from far away. Um, you'd be shouting and it would be very hard and, and so you really didn't get to visit with people. So the sick work person would have to really walk far to get their packages and it's not like when Amazon leaves a package on your porch, right? You open your door, it's right there. That is very convenient. Um, but it's like if Amazon dropped your package 12 houses away and you had to walk down there to get it. Many people believe that people who had leprosy had gotten the disease because of some terrible sin that they had committed. Can you imagine how sad and alone they were? Have you guys ever had someone mad at you and you didn't even know what you did? It's a sad and horrible feeling and I feel like that's probably how they were feeling. And, and that's kind of sometimes how you feel when you feel like things are hopeless. One day a man with leprosy came to Jesus and the man knelt down before Jesus and said, can you make me clean? which was another way to ask Jesus if he could take the germs away and heal him. Remember, back in Jesus' day, if you were unclean, it meant you had lots of germs. Jesus looked at the man, and he felt love, and he felt compassion for him. And he reached out his hand, and he touched him. A man with leprosy, Jesus touched him and said, I will heal you. Be clean. Immediately, the leprosy was gone from the man, and he was cured. Sometimes we may find ourselves in a situation where we were uncomfortable, like when we had chicken pox or poison ivy, um, maybe even something else. We might feel like it's truly hopeless. When it happens, where do you think we can turn? Where did the leper turn? The leper turned to Jesus, and he had never met Jesus, but he had heard about him. And he had heard about the miraculous things that Jesus could do. And it gave him hope. It gave him hope that Jesus might be able to help him. So we can turn to Jesus when the situation is hopeless. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is our hope. So I wore my Youth Annual Conference shirt today because it says hope on it. And I wanted to remind myself that there is always hope. When you have God in your life, there is always hope. When you put God in the most important space of your heart, it will help you in anything that happens in your life. Your challenge this week from me, yes, I'm giving you a challenge, is to find a Bible verse about hope that you feel happy about or that speaks to you. There are well over a hundred scripture vibes uh, verses about hope in the Bible. I think that you guys can find one that will speak to you and that will mean something to you for your whole life. It's something you can carry with you your whole life. If you want to text it to me or email me or even call me and tell me what your verse is all week long, um, I think that would be awesome. Uh, it, it would be most welcome for you to do that. I would love it. I miss you guys and to hear your messages and scriptures of hope would be a pretty cool week, I'm not going to lie. And just like I tell you guys, all the time, the last couple months, I love you and I miss you. And I hope that you have a wonderful week. And a happy first day of school for everybody too, because that's coming, coming soon. We all might be starting on a different day, but it's all within the next week or two. Um, so I hope, I know that a lot of you are going back online. And I know that that's not your favorite idea, but I still hope you have a good first day of school and um, maybe you'll even get to talk to some of your friends that you didn't get to talk to this summer. So let's quiet our hearts and our heads. Take a deep breath and pray together, okay? Repeat after me today. Dear wonderful Father, you sent your son to bring hope to the hopeless. When we find ourselves 
in a hopeless situation. Please help us to put our hope and our trust in you. Amen. Thank you guys. Have a good week. A lesson from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by the fa my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Loving God, you have gathered us today to remind us of your love sent to us through your son, Jesus. Today we have come to worship, longing for your presence to be real in our midst. So come, Holy Spirit, open our eyes to your grace around us. Teach us to be compassionate and to always work for justice. Wake us from sleep. Remind us of our mission. Teach us to love one another and send us out into the world to boldly share your love wherever we go. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. As I was reading our lessons for this week, I couldn't help but think of all the things that have gone on at Rockport this week. We've had a number of committee meetings, and as many of you are aware by now, we met on Thursday evening for a virtual all-church meeting. During that meeting on Thursday night, the leadership at Rockport had a chance to share information with you about our current state of affairs at the church and the child care. And we shared with you the incredibly difficult decision to close our child care center at the end of next week. Administrative Council finalized that vote at the end of Thursday's meeting. And we've taken the last few days to share this heartbreaking news with our child care staff and the families that we serve. Friends, it has been a whirlwind of a week. These are decisions that none of us wanted to make. Certainly many of us felt disconnected and a bit out of the loop as the Finance Committee was doing its work to steward the resources of the church and make a recommendation. And if we're being honest, many of us have felt disconnected from the financial and practical life of the church for quite some time. It isn't just the pandemic and the lack of gathering in person for worship each week. Our disconnection is a much longer term issue. And suddenly, this week, it's as if we are jolted back into reality, woken abruptly from sleep, and reminded that we need to be the church together. This kind of awakening is precisely what Paul writes about in his letter to the Romans. Paul's message is an urgent message, designed to spur the Christian community into faithful action. It's a message designed to wake Christians from their sleep, to encourage them on their journey and remind them of their highest purpose and calling, to live in light of God's redeeming love and to share that love with the world around us. Friends, this is what church is all about. This is what we exist to do. For the last several decades, Rockport Early Childhood Center has been a gift to our church and our community. 
Each week as children have been cared for, we have shared the love of Christ with those children and their families. Each week as our staff have given love and service to children and their families, they've also given love and service to each other. God has been at work among them and through them. Rockport Early Childhood Center has been an important ministry of our church, sharing God's love by caring well for all of God's people, whether they attend our church on Sunday mornings or not. Together we have lived in light of God's redeeming love and shared that love with each person who has walked through our doors. The same has been true for our church and its other ministries as well. Rockport is and has been a welcoming place for people to connect with God and one another. Even in the midst of this continuing pandemic, we are finding ways to connect with God and share God's love with each other. We've had church members deliver groceries to one another. We've had people donating to and stocking our Take What You Need cabinet. We've had people come mow the lawn and pull weeds. People have taught Bible studies, and many of us have learned new forms of technology to connect in worship, study, and fellowship. Even in the midst of a pandemic, we have found ways to continue loving one another and sharing God's love with our neighbors. But today's scripture lessons call us to more. They invite us to take the next step to wake from sleep, to be shaken from complacency, to rise up and take the next steps to follow Jesus as we look toward our future with hope. Friends, Christ is counting on us and calling us to redefine our mission and ministry here at Rockport Church. God is inviting us to a time of intentional discernment and prayer as we reimagine our mission, vision, and values to share God's love in the world from this moment forward. This is a time for all of us to wake from sleep and rise up to be the church that God is calling us to be. It's a time for us to put aside the things of darkness, the divisions and quarrels and infighting, and to work together to share God's love in the world. It's time for us to forgive one another for our sins of the past, and to look forward with hope for the future that God is beckoning us toward, even now, especially now, friends. In our gospel lesson for this morning, Jesus teaches the disciples and all of us some important lessons for life together. He invites us to deal honestly and directly with one another as we address the hurts that we have caused and those that have happened to us in community. And friends, this is hard and holy work. It's the work of the church, learning to love one another through the good and joyful times, but also through the difficult ones. I know that each one of us has our own story to tell. Every one of us has been hurt, and all of us have also hurt others, sometimes within this very community of the church. There are times when we have felt left out, and times when we have left others out. There are times when we have caused harm, whether intentionally or unintentionally, and times when others have harmed us. And in order for us to move forward, in order for us to heal and move freely into the love that God offers to us, in order for us to reimagine ministry here at Rockport and embrace God's vision for our future, we must first do the hard work of addressing the hurts and seeking healing together. Friends, there is power in community. Jesus tells us where two or three are gathered, even when we're gathered across technological platforms, God is in the midst of us, right here, right now. As we gather for worship or study or prayer or fellowship, God is with us. As we gather for meetings and for difficult but honest conversations, God is with us. God is teaching us, leading us, and guiding us into a future where we reimagine our witness in the world and where we redefine who we are as children of God called to serve and share God's kingdom. 
But more than that, friends, more importantly than anything I've said so far, is the knowledge that we are a people of hope. And that hope that God gives to us is hope that can never be taken away. Hope undergirds us on our difficult days and invites us into new possibilities. Hope reaches out to us and lifts us when we're feeling lost or alone. And friends, the church is here to remind us of that hope. Even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of difficult conversations and decisions, even in the midst of endings, there is always hope. There is always a new beginning. That's the fundamental truth of our Christian story, that the end is never truly the end. That death does not have the final word, but hope and love do. That resurrection always comes, not in the way we always expect, but in the way we need most. So friends, on this difficult week, there are two things that I want you to know. The first is that it's okay to feel however you feel. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be disappointed or even to be relieved. Whatever you're feeling is okay. It's been a hard week. Not just here at church, but also in many of your lives and certainly in the world around us. The second thing that I want you to know this week is that I truly believe, with all of who I am, that God is inviting Rockport on a new adventure. New adventures are scary. Sometimes they're painful and full of surprises, but they carry with them the hope for a future. New adventures are filled with new possibilities, and I trust that while we don't know exactly where God is leading us yet, that God is with us on the journey, and that God will continue to invite us to be the church, to live in light of God's love and share it with the world in new ways as we move forward together. None of this is easy work, but friends, I know it will be worth it. And I hope that you know that too, because I am looking forward to being on this adventure and this journey with you. I'm looking forward to walking with you through joyful moments. I'm honored and privileged to walk through the difficult ones like this week. I know that God will do things that we cannot yet imagine. And I look forward to seeing how each of us will grow as God continues to transform us in love, pushing us outside our comfort zones and where we have been to a new reimagined ministry here at Rockport. In the meantime, however, it's time for us to take the Apostle Paul's advice. It's time for us to wake from sleep to rise to the challenges, joys, and opportunities that this very moment brings as we continue to live out Christ's call in our lives, in our church, and in the world. Friends, may we do so boldly, undergirded by the hope that Christ gives to us and strengthened that we are on this journey together. Amen. Beloved, let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is sitteth at the right hand, hand of God, God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace and steadfast love, we thank you for your commandments which order our life together. We thank you for calling us to live honorably with one another and pray for your grace as we try to do all that you require of us. 
Increase in us, we pray, the capacity to love you and our neighbors without reserve, and to love even those who harm us, not half-heartedly, but with our whole hearts. Today we bring before you the cares, the concerns, and the joys that occupy us. We remember before you those who are at odds with one another, in families, in neighborhoods, our offices, and even in the church. We pray for nations in the midst of internal or external struggles and conflict. Teach us, O oh God, to seek nonviolent ways toward resolution. Help us to speak the truth and to listen with understanding when perspectives are far apart. We pray for love to bring peace into every troubled heart and place. We remember before you those who have physical needs today, people who are hungry and thirsty, people who are exhausted by the demands of work or caregiving, people who are sick or undergoing surgery, and people who live with chronic pain. Bring relief and rest, we pray. We remember those weighed down with needs of heart and soul, a worry that keeps us awake at night, grief that accompanies us everywhere we go, depression that clouds us or an addiction that grips us. Lift all of these heavy burdens with the light and your peace and presence, we pray. Sustain us over the long journey toward health, and give us trust in you, ourselves, and those who love us. We remember before you this morning not only our cares, but also our joys. For birthdays celebrated and anniversaries enjoyed, we lift prayers for new beginnings, for babies who have been born, for the beginnings of new school years. <laughs> We pray for teachers and staff and students. We pray for all those who have new jobs and new relationships. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of laughter, for enduring friendships and cherished memories. We give thanks that with you there is always a new beginning, a way where there is no way, hope beyond hope, and life beyond death. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. And friends, we boldly pray together using the words that Jesus taught to us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we come to this time of generosity, we come grateful for all that God has entrusted to us, knowing that God has been so generous in providing for our needs. We invite you to support the ministry of Rockport United Methodist Church so that we can continue to do God's work in the world. If you are watching on our website today, you can give to Rockport by clicking the Give button at the top right of your screen. If you're watching on one of our other platforms, we encourage you to visit us at our website, rockportumc.org, and click the Give menu item on the top right to share in today's offering. As always, you can give to Rockport by mailing your offering to the church office or by utilizing your online banking platform. Beloved, Paul's counsel to the church in Rome was this, Oh, no one anything except love for one another. So come, let us love one another and all in God's world by sharing what we have been given so that needs are met and the gospel is proclaimed.
salvation. We know what time it is, time to wake from sleep and to turn from selfishness. We offer now our time, our talents, and our resources to be used for your good purposes and all for love's sake. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, let's sing together, O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. Let us wake from sleep and rise up to be the church God calls us to be. Go from this worship service knowing that you are needed in God's kingdom. And may the love of God pursue you, the grace of Christ overtake you, and the Holy Spirit flow through you as love fills all in all. Amen. Amen.